honest mistake by the bravery on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington, yep. our producer. Right. And inverted commas, heat put. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they, they know. They know. How are you doing? Alright, Carl? Yeah, didn't they also write something about me, uh, bald round head? Yes, perfectly round with yeah. a bald man head, they said, so. Cause you need to know that when you listen to the radio on that. <coughs> really matters what my hair's doing. Your hair, if you've, have you given it a little sort of polish, because you look like a cue ball at the moment, and you've had a shave in it, I've never seen such a round head. It looks, it actually looks like a plate with ears. Yeah, well, for those that have never seen Carl, I, I actually, um, if you remember, I think he looks a little bit like, uh, Mr. Spoon from Button Moon. It, <laughs> he does! He so, does! It does! If, you, if you've um, ever seen that show, that's And just... also, he looks like, you know when they say, um, they find with a little four-foot human, and it's actually half a million years old, and they give it a name, and it's, got, it's the first, you know, Australopithecus into, uh, he looks like one of them as well. Perfect he round it all. He is the missing link. He looks half human, half monkey. He's got a slight slouch as well. So yeah, it's know, like yeah. those pictures where you see it going from an ape to a man. I he's know. Those are in the middle. Yeah, and he's, and of course his monkey hands, his hairy little wrist to those little, like those skinny little things that you can get oranges out of holes with. And it's unbelievable. Why are you so all shaved and polished and everything? Got a wedding. <laughs> what? Got to go to a wedding today, so, uh, thought I'd, you know, clean myself up a bit. Yeah. Shouldn't you be wearing a suit or something? No, I'll go home and put some that on. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, Suzanne, uh, said, you know, make an effort. Uh, I sort of had a shave and that, and then she, I came out of the bathroom, she said, oh, your head looks a bit sort of eggish. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. She always worries about when I have a shave, cause I, I just, you know. That's I mean? your girlfriend, Carl. I know. Saying that. Yeah. Just think, so don't worry about Heat saying it. It's the funny thing is, it's Boyd, Boyd Hilton, I think, of Heat that wrote it. And he's got a little bald head. Yeah, no, don't slag him off. Yeah, but on the end of his review, does it say, you know, written by <laughs> Baldy Boyd? No, because it doesn't matter, it's a magazine. Don't worry about it. Looking forward to the wedding? <sighs> ah, a bit boring, isn't it, but... <laughs> 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 They're probably listening! Should we do a shot? No, it'll be a great day for them, but I know what will happen. Suzanne will see, you know, all the fuss and that, and then she'll get ideas, and I'll have to let her down and all that. Why, uh, why is it you don't want to get married again? I always forget. It's just... It, who's it for at the end of the day? I've been with Suzanne for 11 years, right? Sure. We're happy. Well, I, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what the case. You're and never happy. I am. I'm all right. Yeah, no, you, I know you're happy with Suzanne and everything, but apart from that, you're never happy. You're, you are the most grumpy, moany thing in the world. I mean, I get annoyed. But I'm always happy. I was annoyed here. I was happy coming here, but there was a bloke behind me walking and scuffling his feet. He had a pair of those stupid skulls on. And he, he was clicking and scuffing. Wear some shoes you don't have to click. Pick your feet up. Flip-flops annoy me. Mm. You know? But I'm happy. I'm just annoyed. You are just like, oh, the world's on me. It's rubbish, this. I know the world's great. It's just sometimes people annoy me by <laughs> being there. <laughs> you know? But, uh, <laughs> Steve said I should be locked in one of those towers that princesses used to be in locked fairy in the fairy towers, so, because everything annoys me. Um, but you, you are, you're grumpy. I'm not, I'm all right. Oh, right, okay, listen, we better play a record, um, soon, but, um, coming up, Steve, I went away with Carl. Okay. It was a little present from Jane, it was a golfing day, and I could take someone, took Carl. It was a brilliant day, absolutely, absolutely brilliant, but it ended with us sort of drinking and chatting and me saying, right, I'm going to bed. Because Carl said the most ridiculous thing he has ever said. Think of that. That's something. Oh. Sometimes, Carl, I think you're on another planet. He's the only one. Another Girl, Another Planet by The Only Ones. What a song. Amazing. One of my favourite intros ever. Um, Dr. Fox would disagree with me. His favourite ever was, uh, I think Money for Nothing, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Yeah. Great, another great tune. Yeah, another great, another great tune. I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking him. If uh, you'd like to let us know what your uh, favourite intro of all time. <laughs> 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 that number again is over. Oh. Uh, for, for. Uh. Right. Well, we got so much to, to get through well, with sorry, this show. Let me just get my, I don't quite understand. You were given a gift. And the gift was a golfing, a golfing day, day of golf. And, and, and uh, uh, yeah, for my Christmas present, part of my Christmas present from Jane, um, uh, a night away, um, two rooms, two rounds of golf, dinner for two, right? Mm. Uh, uh, but, but not with her, I noticed. 
Well, she doesn't play. No, she knew. No, it was a right. president who was playing golf. It was. It was a sure. golf event. She doesn't play golf, so um, I had to choose someone to uh, sure. um, uh, take away. Uh, sorry, it wasn't a romantic meal. No, <laughs> no, that was, that was <laughs> my immediate thought. Was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, me and Carl uh, just uh, getting in there in the jacuzzi together. Yeah. It, it was... just seems like an excuse for Jane to have a day off from you. <laughs> <laughs> but right. you don't play golf, Jane. I know. I know. Go, <laughs> go, go. go. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> a bowling ball with yeah. my name on it. Um, so <clears throat> chose Carl. Obviously, um, uh, we went. Well, it was a great day, wasn't it? Brilliant round of golf, absolutely brilliant. Such a beautiful place in Stoke Poges, it's like a really posh place. And does, uh, do, <coughs> are you a good golf, uh, a good golf player? Uh, well, we'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <blow it. laughs> Well, we uh, he bought he we bought the shoes specially for it. Oh, we could play, I'd love to see him in those little shoes. I know, and they were no good because they were metal spikes. We had to change them. He was annoyed straight away. He, he spent over twenty two pounds on his, <laughs> these golf shoes. Mm. Uh, we hired a buggy that was brilliant fun. Uh, I was bombing along, wasn't I? Mm. I don't drive, but I, I just it was great on that buggy. Well, you've been on a buggy with me. You were a bit scared. Yeah. What? what I nearly killed us once. I was just taking banks and things, but you don't see sort of bunkers, and he'd scream, go, stop! And he'd put his foot down the brake, and then went like reverse. Well, at one point, he sort of did a handbrake turn next to the lake, and then we had we had to reverse, right? And you know, you just flick a switch and put your foot down. He did that without looking. I looked behind, there's a big oak tree there. He screams, <laughs> watch the tree, right? He was, he was, yeah. So, cheap to hazard. <laughs> <laughs> I kept jumping in and uh, leaving him behind because I had to go to my ball. Because uh, sure. anyway, um, so uh, the first shot, the first shot, I got on my driver. I honestly did one of the best shots I've ever done. It went straight down. It was great. I thought, phew, got away with that because it's always the first one because it's a clubhouse and you want to yeah, look yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> he's he shot about, and I've been saying, buy some balls, he just got six balls. I was going, what if you lose me? I want these six balls, right? He gets, he tees up, right? Whacks it, it goes miles, like, right angles, straight into these, uh, the, the woods, right? He turns around and he goes, go and buy some more balls. <laughs> so I'm laughing, because it's, like, impolite to laugh, but he, he, he broke the ice for me, and yeah. I was falling around, and then the second shot, I go, you know you're off a three now, if you take another shot, he went, oh, right, so it's his third shot, he puts the ball down. <laughs> he hits the ground before it, and this is the ball off the ground. <laughs> and I was on my back, wasn't I? <laughs> Unbelievable. Actually rolling about on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were like terrible. Tortoise. I went round 107, he went round in like 119 or so much. We, it was just rubbish. How long but did it take? Five hours. Of course. And there was no one around, luckily. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was fantastic. So then we go and have a, um, uh, our meal. What annoys me, I said, right, I'll go for a run, and you went, I'll have a bath. I said, I'll see you at quarter to eight. At five to eight, I have to call him. He's not ready, so he's let me down there. Oh. We, I, I can't stay in lateness or laziness. Lateness. Or, yeah, and he's let me down. Do you know his excuse? He fell asleep in the bath because there was no light bulb. There was no light bulb in the bathroom. So, so he instantly asleep. fell asleep <laughs> and he was late. No, do you know what I mean though, Steve? If you're sort of like nice and warm and what have you. I was tired anyway, I've been stressed out for <laughs> four and a half hours, right? <laughs> uh, right? My life flashed in front of me a few times in that buggy. <laughs> so it's all sort of wears you down a bit. I thought, right, I've got a headache. You're going for your run. I'm going to have a bath. I walk in, put the light on. For some reason it didn't come on, but I thought, it's all right. I'll just, uh, you know, doesn't matter. You can have a bath in the it's dark. summer, so it's light right. anyway. Well, so. there's no windows in the bathroom, so, uh, yeah. So you were in the darkness. So I'm in the darkness. <laughs> I nod off because I'm shattered. <laughs> he calls up, asking me. So I said, well, I won't, I, you know, it doesn't normally take that long for me because, you know, I haven't got, like, long hair, I've got a dryer and sure. I can sort of one wipe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's uh, already ten minutes late, though, when I called. Well, of ten minutes. Mm, ten well, minutes. lateness is lateness. Well, Next. It doesn't matter. I think mm. it wasn't until quarter past, so mm. we had, like, another yeah. twenty minutes anyway. So mm. it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but we said quarter two. So he's calling up, hurry up, hurry up. So I said, yeah, all right. So I get out. I'm drying like my tackle and what have you. It calls back again <laughs> 30 seconds seal, later. You know. No, I don't, no, you know, you don't, don't like that. Do that no. Give it a wipe. 30 seconds later, come on! So I end up going downstairs to the to the meal area. Naked. With a wet shirt on and wet socks. <laughs> I've got headache as it is. Maybe it'll be a relaxing weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we have our meal, which is re really nice. And then, we're, then we're sitting yeah. in the bar. I'm having a, I'm having a cigar by the fire. Yeah. Like we're having a, a rather nice uh, Pinot Grigio. Yeah. He's there going like an egg. It's just like a 55. <laughs> you live in. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's so right. And we, we are 
knackered because you know uh, he's not used to work. I've seen him moaning, falling asleep. He's sure. not used to it at all. And you've been on your feet for o for over half an hour. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, yeah, we didn't even walk around the golf course. <laughs> we had a muggy. Yeah. Wasn't even exercise. So we get onto conversations. He's talking. About, he's, he's asking me stuff about evolution. What about, what's the, tell me that? Why? Why the giraffe? What was that rubbish about the giraffe getting a long neck? I said, well, it didn't. It didn't try and get a long neck. It it was selected. And he said, but. Why would evolution do that? I went, well, you think that evolution didn't do anything? There's not, there's not this consciousness, there's not this will that a giraffe has to stretch its neck to reach the leaves. One had a long enough neck to survive and pass it. He was going, yeah, but why did evolution? But by the way, this isn't the most stupid thing. This okay. is uh, this is warming up. This is about quarter to nine. Right? Right? He said, why didn't evolution make a giraffe good at carpentry so it could build a ladder? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. All right. Right. Okay. So he's thinking. He's thinking around it. He's trying to. He's trying to pick holes in evolution. Yeah. We get on to. Uh, I said. Well, the things. Are, uh, I said. Uh, um, uh, we can see the speed of evolution in, um, in lower life forms like bacteria, viruses. They evolved. And that's why um, uh, soon we won't have an antibiotic um, that can kill some certain bacterial strains. And he said. And this is about um, half eleven. And I said, I'm going to bed. Right. He said, in the future. They reckon that you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Let's put a song on, right? No, and we'll well, come back to so it. So you're going to explain that? Yeah. You've got an explanation. Yeah. The Verve and Sonic on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. So let's just get this right. What did Carl say? He's just specifically he said, words he again. said, they reckon, and he, he, he uh, I said I'm going to bed, he went, no really, I said no, I'm going to bed, Carl, there's no point now, because <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just like you're talking gobbledygook, you know what I mean? I might as well talk for a pot plant. <laughs> yeah. He said, in the future, they reckon, I don't know who they are, <laughs> sure. I don't know, people who post things on the internet that he reads, uh, I think. Telegraph. Anyway, can, can complete the sentence. They reckon that in the future you'll be able to wake up. I love it. There's always a little scenario, an embellishment, yeah. like this little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, darling. It's your yogurt. Hello. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to wake up and eat a yogurt you can have a chat with. All right. Well, that, you know, thanks for that, Rick. I'm looking at you. I'm going to throw that over to Carl. <laughs> right. It's when I was away on holiday, right? I got. Uh, I don't normally buy the Telegraph because it's too big and that, isn't it? So, but, uh, they were giving it away for free on the plane, so I thought... Ding dong. Might yeah. as well have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I saw a couple of things in it, and I thought that would be interesting. I saw this thing about the future, and it was talking about evolution and what have you, right, which I always find weird, because I always think that maybe we've sort of done it wrong anyway. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think... You can't, you can't, evo it, 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 by definition, evolution can't get things wrong. Mm. Things change that it's not successful. It can't pass on its uh, genetic material. Or, uh, but it, it, if if you're around, you're, it's working. If you're around, it's working. Slugs are as evolved as they need to be. Slugs are as evolved as you. And well, me. that's true enough. No, yeah, yeah. No disrespect, but it works. It so, works. Sorry, but around. Anyway, what's your point, Carl? No, I mean, I think we probably would have been better off staying as a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just because, because there's more water than land, isn't there? Right. And you wouldn't drown. This is why I went to bed. No, I can imagine. I'm thinking of dozing off now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it went, it, do you know what I mean, from, well, what was it? it was bacteria, it was yeah. fish, mermaid, man, <laughs> onwards and what have you. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> but, oh, oh so God! Oh, oh God! No, there there are a few knowledge gaps in your theory of evolution. <laughs> oh, you generally got it right, though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, yeah, it, it went, it went bacteria, fish, mermaid, man. Um, <laughs> so what, what, what next is the big question? <laughs> so, so it was telling you all about this and what have you been saying now? Like uh, we shouldn't have interfered because maybe if we wouldn't have invented planes and what have you, maybe we'd be able to fly and what have you. Sure, so we really yeah. needed to and stuff yeah, like that. Okay. So, we've, so we've interfered with with mm. evolution, you see. Right. But then it was saying, well, what's the future got? Well, we, well, yes, in one way we have interfered with evolution, yeah. The, uh, the evolution of the human being in society is changing. It's not, it's no longer based on the strongest or the fittest because medical science can keep us alive long enough. Um, people can uh, uh, pass on their genetic material where without this civilization they wouldn't have been able to. So, yeah, um, it's di it, 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 there are different parameters, uh, there are different pressures, there are different things that say whether we're going to pass on our genetic material or not. Okay. So in that 
that's that's your right. And that, that, Rick, as far as I'm aware, has led to a yogurt that you can eat and <laughs> have a conversation with. So <laughs> this, this is what it was saying. It was just saying, you know, we're living in mad times and that. You know, sure. there's a lot of weird stuff going on. One of and, which uh, is. Go on. And, and the fellow was just saying, uh, you know, with computers and stuff like that, the way it is, uh, we'll be able to wake up. Go on. Have a chat with your yogurt and have something to eat. What do you mean, have a chat with your yogurt? Because of the amount of, I mean, you have them yogurts already, those friendly yogurts. Those bacteria friendly ones, so this is just a, a really friendly one. Yeah, they didn't re <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! I'm my best! Do you know what, sometimes, Carl, I think that we're having a chat with a yogurt. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> there can't be any difference! Uh, uh, yeah, but then I'm always reminded that would be more entertaining. <laughs> That would be more informative. God! You two, City of Blinding Lights. I'm gonna see them next week at Twickenham. Yeah. Well, enjoy that. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. again for letting me know about your, uh... Old Nobbo and, and Edge and yeah. all that. Now listen, you just got an email there saying, can you turn up uh, your microphone, Steve. Apparently my voice is a little bit, uh, quiet. Carl has to do one thing, make sure we're heard. That's yep. all he has to do. Well, I can hear it. Sounds fine to me. Mm. Well, not to the, the listeners, and that's who we're trying to please. Well, yeah. it's one person, so they can't hear Yes, you. but we've only got one listener. So <laughs> yeah. he's not happy. We're buggered. <laughs> You'd have to say buggered. Um... Mm. Not twice, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> One's gonna be a mistake. Yeah. Twice, pointing it out, is definitely, yeah, complaint material. Now, Carl. Carl, you haven't uh, told us about your holiday yet. You were meant to do it last week and you didn't. Uh, you started yes. doing this but we didn't have time because we had to do monkey news about a monkey who was a director who cared about lighting and stuff. Mm. Is there but, more monkey news this week? Uh, yep. is it as, uh, uh, okay. Is there, is it real monkey news? C did it happen or is it mostly embellishment in your round little head? It's proper stuff. Yeah, okay, it's good. So, holiday, where did you go on holiday? Uh, Sardinia. Good? Yeah, it's alright, yeah. Uh, nice food and that. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, nice beaches and what have you. Excellent. Oh, it's like a nice long beach to walk down. Yeah. But, uh, so we're having a nice walk, right? You know, uh, nudists do me head in. Sure. <laughs> right. Not uh, a problem though, is it? It's not like being scared of spiders where they might jump out under the chick uh, chicken sink, kitchen sink at you. You know what I mean? It's not a big problem being... I mean, they're done in by nudists. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it just annoys me, it sort of ruins the day a little bit. Because it, it, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Take your clothes off if you feel uncomfortable. It's much more relaxing. Yeah, but, well anyway, <laughs> right, so I'm walking along the beach, right? Lovely long beach, might I be here, you know, watching the sea, picking up shells and that. And what are, your, what are you wearing? What's your natural beach club? When he says picking up shells, I imagine he's like on all fours going, <laughs> yeah. like that, you know what I mean, looking at things. <laughs> <laughs> Just like washing his nuts in the sea to, to get them the, get tasty. Yeah, going into the sea and then kind of shaking himself and all the water flows off. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've just got, you know, flip-flops on, pair of shorts, so and, yeah, uh, and like a little, a little light shirt. Sure. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, walking along, and, uh, Suzanne goes, oh look, right, and there's this woman, German, I think, uh, coming out of the- How can you tell she was German? Underarm well, hair? I'll get to it. Forget okay. the underarm hair. <laughs> <laughs> she came out, it looked like she was <laughs> smuggling seaweed. <laughs> I'm right. going to first! Oh god! And, and the, the funny thing is, right? <laughs> she, uh. <laughs> Smuggling seaweed! Oh god! She, uh, she was a bit hairy down there, was she? It, mental. <laughs> I felt bad because I hadn't had a shave for two days, right? Looked at her. Just, it was ridiculous. She might as well have kept her trunks on. <laughs> it was just like she was wearing furry trunks, right? So, anyway. Oh god! So, I'm walking around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on So Suzanne's like, oh, look, and I'm like, oh, not again, you know, because every time we go away, there always seems to be one of these. Is she by herself, it? this woman? Well, the weird thing was, she was with her husband, right, oh, yeah. but he had shorts on, he yeah. was happy, right, yeah. but every time, like, because I walked past her and he sort of ran off, because he's, he's embarrassed, <laughs> you know what I mean, there's yeah. nothing normal about it, How, what can he do? He can't go, all right, mate, because he knows it's, it's odd, right? How so old was he? Uh, sorry, how old was she? 
It's hard to tell when someone hasn't got clothes on. Sure. You know what I mean? It's they, they always look older, don't they? When when they haven't got clothes on anyway. But I'd say she was about forty, forty one. Okay. Right. So um, so yeah. So I walked past, and, and the annoying thing is, she, she got there on a bike, right? No clothes on. Little pair of boots next to the bike. So if you can wear boots, just pop some shorts on. <laughs> you know what I mean? That takes more effort for me putting boots on. I put the shorts on. Right. right. So anyway, so the husband kept running off. I walked past, and, and I, I'm getting annoyed because I'm saying, well, we've got to walk past them again on the way back. I know the fact they're scuttling away when Carl walks past. Like when you lift up a bit of, um, sort of iron sheeting in the woods and loads of mice run away. Yeah. It's like whenever Carl goes, that nudists run away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, but no, so, so, we sort of come walking back and what have you, and, and, you know, I have a, have another look and what have you, and he runs off again. Look, why are you having another look if it offends you so much? Oh, you might as well just... Just have a look. You know what I mean? It's just putting it on show and what have you. But yeah. the interesting thing was, I just wondered whether the, the husband. Because if I, the husband were nude, you'd look at his tackle. Because remember when you went to see those two strippers and it was a woman and man and they whipped their shorts off, you said you looked at his tackle first. Uh, I think any bloke would. Well. You would. You just check it out. It's natural, isn't it? You just go, oh, right. <laughs> well, it is normal or whatever. Because you don't know if. You, you know what I mean? You don't know if what you've got's right until you see someone else's. <laughs> No, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go but on. anyway, so, um, but he got us talking, because I was, then, as soon as I saw her, sort of, today's been ruined a bit, so I'm walking up the beach. <laughs> it's been ruined! Walking up the beach with Suzanne going, how does it happen? Do you know what I mean? Why do people do this? What's, what's, what fun are they getting out of it? And what have you? And, um, I just was thinking, is there any chance that that fella, right, didn't even know that she was a nudist until they went away? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I said to Suzanne, if, if, say if I met Suzanne, it's like we're getting on, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And then you go off on holiday and you go, you haven't got much, uh, luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, no, it's fine, this is plenty, and I'm thinking that's weird. And then we go down the beach and she whips her knickers off. <laughs> I'd, I'd be annoyed, but there's nothing I could do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sure. So I'm just wondering whether that's what happened to this fella. Every time someone came walking up, he was like, oh, God, this is embarrassing. And yeah. he kept nipping off. Yeah. Finding something else to do. Look at some shells. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what? I'm wondering, Rick, if at some point, maybe today or in future shows, we should get a nudist. You know, one of these official nudist spokespeople, you know, because all these nudist organisations, get them on the phone, justify themselves to Carl, because, you know, in, in his mind, they are, what would you say, weirdos, freaks? I just don't, I don't quite get it. I was reading something in one of the supplements last weekend, and some journalist went round to some, uh, whatever you call it, some resort or whatever and for, just for the it, nudes sure. and that. And it's Were just- Were they playing like, volleyball? Well, the only thing was, bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that annoying? Well, don't play a sport where you got to bend over. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Young from the album Zuma, and that's, uh, Pardon My Heart. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Team Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We just had a, a text here that says, and I don't know what truth there is in this as ever, but John says there is apparently a nude bike ride today mm. in Hyde Park. Now, I can't believe that's the case because I don't think it's allowed, is it? You can't ride around with your, your veg, can you? I don't know. Why would you want to? Well, it's a good point. On a bike. <laughs> on a bike, I love the fact that that's what disgusts him. I, I, I want, do you know what, if we did appeal for a nudist to call in, I want a very specific sort, I don't want to look, I want, I want a German nudist, a middle-aged man called Helmut. Okay. If there is any, or the closest one to it. So, I want a middle-aged man from Germany, if your name is Helmut, you're in, but I'll accept, I'll accept Hans, um, Carl would be okay. good, wouldn't it? All right. Yeah. I think I'm. I'm wondering if the age might. Maybe we could. Could we? Could we broaden? Okay. Out a just a bit? German. A German nudist bloke. Right. Could he at least be fat? <laughs> <laughs> could I find a fat German fella? If your name's Helmut, we're going to give you a big prize. Yeah. But you know, any fat German fella who likes to get his sausage out. Sure. Okay. It's sauerkraut. Yeah. What's the phone number? Uh, oh eight seven one. Triple T one oh four nine. It'd be good just to get an email or a text though with a contact on it, and okay. then I can just call them up in the week. Sure. And uh eighty three nine three six is the uh, text number. I think I mean I don't know what our um our audience demographic pans out like, Rick, but I'm suspecting that's probably a fairly small fraction of our listenership. 
the, I know, uh, but you know, the there must German be someone out there. If you know a fat German who likes to get his tackle out, the phone's going. Straight away, going. straight away. Just answer it, Carl. Just answer it. Just pop that. It could just... be anything. Well, let's just no, see what be, it is. To be fair, it could be a nutter. It could be a nutter. But it just say hello. Just if no, your turn is not straight away. On, it'll stay there, won't we? It'll stay there. We'll answer it. Oh, let's answer leave it. it. Leave it. Answer it. Oh, you see this? It's gone. It's gone. There you go. He bottled it. So, just as well. Well, you took too long to answer it. There's isn't a it? vicar in uh, <laughs> Australia who's he started sort of doing his services and all that. And nude. Hot in it there, out there. Yeah, well, you get the churches thing. aren't. Churches are pretty cold. <laughs> That's, uh, it was on uh, on some website. Of course it was. Yep. Just saying about a, a vicar and that who's uh, there's a lot of nudists and that who want to get married. Do it, you know. You know, don't mess about with the wedding dress and that. Just snip up. Jeez, well, isn't it? well, I also suppose it's so. Uh, I suppose if you believe in God, you believe that uh, that's the way to be in it, because Adam and Eve and that. Yeah, but then in Adam and Eve, they, the shame made us uh, dress up, didn't it? Yeah. Eating the apple and things. Yeah, but God didn't want that, did he? No, he wanted to see it all. He was loving it. <laughs> he was never aware of some getting a life full of all of that, and then they, the snake said, cover yourself up. Stitched, stitched him right up. Yeah. So if you believe in God, which clearly I don't, do you believe in God, Carl? Uh, don't know, I don't really worry about it. It was ages ago, wasn't it? So, you know, if he's about, whatever, whatever. Not that bothered. Adam and Eve is pretty interesting though, isn't it? It's not, well, how, how was it interesting? He made, he made, he made man, made, uh, out of dust, then he, cause, just cause he could, he's having a laugh, um, then he made, uh, her out of his, one of his ribs, again, he liked to vary it a little bit, then they had two sons, uh, which gave rise to the entire human race. What was going on there then? What would have happened if they didn't get on? <sighs> that's interesting. Sometimes with pandas they don't fancy the other one, do they? They go, well that's my choice, one. You've brought me one panda from Lisbon Zoo and I've got to chag that. What if I don't fancy it? What if they bring in the right, a right slapper? Do you think What if it's the equivalent of like, um, uh, uh Love Island, whatever well, it's called. I it was like Celebrity Love Island. Yeah. And they're going, I am not shagging that slapper. Every, every panda in the world has seen that dirty old mott in magazines. Why am I meant to mate with it? I've got some dignity. Are you talking about Adam there or Panda? Was that? Um, well, I, I, I go as far as this. Do you think that Adam had any say? When God was making Eve, was he saying, can make, make the boobs a bit bigger, would you? And then, <laughs> I'm sort of, I'm a blonde guy, I'm into blondes, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, did he have any input or was it just. I don't know. Well, I suppose it's. It was uh, one of his ribs. I know, but well, he's probably restricted. You go, well, I'm, I'm working with a rib, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Give me a break. There's only so many things I can do. Well, he's probably, he's probably in kind of intensive care, wasn't he, with well, the whole. They go, well, I can't just keep making the boobs and things bigger because their legs are get short. I, I don't mind well, short they, legs. Well, yeah, they get I don't mind no legs. I don't mind no legs. As long as the boobs are sizable. <laughs> I, tell you, I tell you what's weird, though, Steve, right? Everyone's heard of, like, Adam and Eve. Yeah? What's the surname? Yeah, where'd they get their post from? Unbelievable. Now listen, before you play the next tune, we should just, uh, we were trying to mop up some stuff from the last couple of shows which we haven't dealt with yet. One of which is an obsession of yours, because you're, we're on a radio station, Ricky and I come in, we bring in CDs, music we love, it means so much to us, we adore it. You don't really care about music, you, oh. you work at a radio station, it's just, eh, uh, you know, I don't no, care. I do, I do. I no, do. No, you don't. I do like a good track. I don't like everything that comes out and everyone raves about. Yeah, you thought the iPod wasn't worth it because you, you you named the five tracks you'd like. What was it? It was In the Ghetto, Babushka, Living in the City, what was the other one? Uh, Killing a Georgie, and there was one other one or something, and you just only like songs with a story. Yeah, but then there's a reason to listen to it, isn't there? Well, no, only story once. Going on. No, because you might forget the ending. Listen to it again. Yeah, but anyway, might, yeah. We, you've been listening to Babushka quite a lot, is that right? Because you've, you've really got into your head now, you're trying to decipher well, the when story. Well, when I've been sort of asking for songs with stories, people have texted and emailed in and whatever, and I've had, I've had a couple, you know, last time we did the show. So I've gone, oh, right, that sounds interesting. Uh, and Babushka, when I was away on holiday, I listened to it a few times because I like the story. It's a good little story going on. You got some thoughts on it there, have you? Uh, a couple of questions. Well, we, we have a listen well, to Well, let's have a listen uh, to the track, and then I know you've got some queries you'd like to raise. It's just about a, f a woman, isn't it, who, uh, I don't know, she's ugly or something, aged badly, and her husband gets bored with her. Have a listen, see what you think. Right. XFM. <laughs> oh, 
listening to Magic 105.4. That was all the way back to 1979. Kate Bush, Babushka. <laughs> so, um, we yet would like your suggestions for songs which have stories in them, which, um, may entertain Carl. They could shoot to the top of his list. What do you think of that, Carl? That has a, has a, a little story there. Uh, I like it, but... So she, she tests her husband. Yeah, she writes him letters. She gets a letter back. It's a pseudonym. Babushka's her pseudonym. It's not a real name. Her real name is uh, uh, Molly Strank <laughs> from Ealing. Um, <laughs> and uh, Eva responds. She goes, "Oh, he's, he's, he's you know." So uh, in real terms, he's he's having a bit of a an illicit affair behind her back because she doesn't know it's his wife. So she goes, "Oh, well, I'll take this a bit further. See how far I go." He turns up. She turns up, she, you know, he gets it on with her, and he's falling for her because she's acting like she used to act, you know. It's, yeah, it's, was yeah. he just playing along with it? Was he like a No, you? no, it's not, because they'd have said that in the song. They don't leave well, it up to Some people that, do that, don't they? Well, it wasn't. Kate okay, Bush would have said, and by the way, he's playing along. She'd have given us a clue. He's not. He's falling for it. <laughs> She went along incognito. He thought it was another woman. But how much work can you do to yourself to, if, say, say, if, like, uh, <sighs> I I wrote a letter to Suzanne, yeah. right, saying she uh, knows was you. It'd have egg stains on it. It'd be spelt wrong. No, but and you'd sign it, Carl, crossed out, her, Babushka. I wrote to her. Uh, I won't pick Babushka. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a ridiculous name. That wouldn't have worked anyway. You just get a vision in your head of. I wouldn't have answered a letter from someone called Babushka. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the point. If Kate Bush is listening, please call in because I'd love her to have a conversation well, with you. I mean, that would be great. Forget Helma. No, no, Helma, you keep trying. A fat German. We want Kate Bush and a fat German. What I mean is, though. Now, wait a minute. What worries me is he didn't answer the last phone call. What if Kate Bush does think? <laughs> Well, if anyone Chris knows, if anyone knows Kate Bush, give her a call now. She's probably not listening. She's probably doing yoga or something, I imagine, or making a, a lentil soup, or, or maybe just like repotting some plants, right? But or practicing piano, right? But if anyone knows Kate Bush, she's got a number. Call her up now. Say, tune into XFM. There's a little bald mank fella wants to talk to you about Babushka, right? No, but but how much? But how much? Don't worry. You you you'll get your. Chant. The how, phones are going. That much, could be Kate Bush. Be Bush. Yeah, that that could, not, don't worry about it. It's that could Kate be Kate Bush. Oh, I know for a fact it isn't. Okay, okay. Oh, answer yeah. it. Half Light by Athlete on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl. Right. Two o'clock. Let's get Rockbusters rolling. I should just, um, if people aren't familiar with Rockbusters, then, um, someone has actually sent in one of their own to test Carl. Um, they've used, I think, the same principle that Carl has, which is, you know, a... utterly random. Yeah. As you said before, Tenuous, you know, really just, just trying not to really think of cryptic. something yeah. that he might sure, be thinking of. Sure, sure, So, um, I'm gonna, I mean, she's done it quite coherently, but I'm wondering if I should sort of say it more as Carl might say it, you know, just slightly less. More different every time. Yeah, slightly less coherent. So, um, Carl, this is one for you, all right? Go on. You know, it's Sunday morning, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm in bed, but I don't sleep, you know, but like, Hollyoaks is on, the omnibus, I'm just watching that, you know. Um, I go and make a lovely cup of tea, you know, I'm in the bed with Suzanne, aren't I, having a cup of tea? What's going on there? Just watching the telly and that, but hang on, I haven't got anything to dunk in me, uh, in my tea. I haven't got anything to dunk in my tea, have I? You know what I mean? I haven't got anything to dunk in there, I'm just having, you know, what, what am I doing? Is What's, it LB? It's LR. Oh. LR. So, have a think about that one, Carl. I, I think I know it. Yeah. Do you? Go for it. Go on. Is it Lionel Rich Richie? It is Lionel sort Richie. Of, What's your logic? Sort of lying in Lionel, and it's like no, no rich tea, no, no rich tea. tea. Yeah. No biscuits, no rich tea. Lion, no rich tea. Lionel Rich tea. Lionel <laughs> Richie. It works. It's, it's, it's just, it's just coming here as like yours. What's that? We've done one a little bit like it. There's nothing wrong with that. I cannot believe so you got that's it. A, that's a <laughs> toaster. I cannot it. believe you got it. I might not have got it without the initials, but that's why we chuck them in just to help you along. 
<laughs> so, Christ, um, what have you got for us right, this week? So we've, got, we've got three of them. Oh, we've by got... the way, don't bother calling in Kate Bush because Carl doesn't want to answer the phones. He says Kate Bush is not going to call, so it's just all going to be nutters. So we apologise. He's got one thing to do. He didn't even get the sound right because someone was complaining about they couldn't hear Steve. He's got to do monkey news, which is always twaddle, and he won't even answer the phones now. So I don't know. I don't know why he gets paid. He takes off Mondays because he works see. Saturdays. He I gets don't. paid for Saturdays. He takes five weeks not holiday a year. Not off Mondays. And, and, and he moans. Not off Mondays. Wow. <laughs> Right, uh. Um, what, what have you got for us? Right then, the first one. Uh. There's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Right? Right? <laughs> there, there's a vehicle that sells kebabs. Initial D. Right? D. <laughs> Great. Right? Have you worked that one out? Of course I haven't. Right, the second one. Um. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You <laughs> are. <laughs> you are. You're asked if you, if you want that bit of the egg. Yeah. You think about it, but we t uh, sort of decide against it. <laughs> and what, again, what's going on there? You're asked if you want that bit of the egg. You think about it, but you go, no, nah, go against it. Right? I've I've got it. Is so it is initials W uh, Y O? Yeah, got it. Right, so okay, yeah. that uh, one that one works. Right. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. Uh, and the last one. I don't think this burger will catch on. I don't think this burger will catch on. Yeah, and the letter there is M. So you just uh, text or email in uh, with the answers and uh, win some stuff. What have yeah. we got? We've got some prizes. We've got uh, another box set of the League of Gentlemen. This um, is instant gratification, but uh, you go into a draw for some, something bigger. So what have we got today? Yeah, well, today, this is what you're taking home today. Uh, yeah. You've got the League of Gentlemen, the complete collection on DVD. That's yeah. not worth, that's worth having, definitely. Uh, we've got Catterick, which is the current Vic and Bob show on BBC Two, which is uh, good. The Aviator, the um, the award-winning um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Martin Scorsese biopic. And once again, Ladder 49. We're giving that away again, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently we've got... Um, can we get a job like those? We've got loads of them. We've got Oh, yeah. excellent. So Email in if you just want a copy of Ladder 49. I'm sure we could dig one out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or phone in, because Carl does not answer the phones. Right. And remember, the winner goes forward f uh, into the chance to win the big prizes, the h signed Homer drawing, uh, the signed Nigel Tufnell poster, and you go to rickygervais.com and see Matt Groening actually drawing that to, uh, to, to verify it. But Lloyd Carl won't oh, never wrote anyone, has it? Has it? <laughs> Lloyd Cole, Impossible Girl, on XFM 104.9. Wow. Rick, I'm just reading an email we've had, and it is indeed true. Scores of naked cyclists will be wheeling around London today in a mass protest against oil dependency. The World Naked Bike Ride will see the arresting sight of up to 200 daring riders bearing all in their cycle past some of the capital's most famous landmarks. Have they got to wear an helmet? <laughs> Are they against wearing a helmet? Well, I don't. I, I, I think they're trying to trying to make a statement. I would imagine. I don't know. Well, they don't have to wear a helmet. It's not law to wear a helmet on a bike, is it? Oh, it's for your own safety. It's sensible. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's also sensible to just pop some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> pop some pants on. Are you going to be popping down, pop down there and cheering them on? I'm not. I'm not going anywhere near it. What What are they going against? What's the problem that's going on? Um, oil dependency. I think, you know, generally we're consuming too much oil, aren't we, in the world, and it's going to run out one day, and we've not talking got any alternatives. Uh, talking of, um, uh, campaigns and, uh, things and that, um, did you see, uh, um, Sir Bob on, um, Jonathan Ross last night? Sir Bob Geldof. Sir Bob Geldof. Yeah. Uh, um, are you going to walk to, uh, Edinburgh or sail to France, Carl? What, what do you think of all this? The G8? Uh, I think it's good that, you know, he's, uh, he's doing some stuff for the world and what have you, but... Probably won't, won't bother. No. Having a walk. What do you make of all this, all this campaigning? You know, he's dedicated his life to this now, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I was watching him last night, and I uh, respect the man. I mean, he used to work here, didn't he? Did some shows and that. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's all right that he, that he can do it, but... I assume that's not why you respect him. I assume you respect him because he's trying to save a nation, as opposed to he used to work at XFM for a while. Yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm just saying is, uh... It's, it's good that he's... he's Giving up a lot of his time to, you know, try and save the world and that, but, you know, there's a bit of me that's kind of like, you know, is he wasting his time a bit? Right. Well, what do you mean wasting his time? Well, he's he tried it before and. No, no, wait, 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 wait. What he's trying to say is that the G8 are the, the uh, I think the seven most uh, rich, wealthy nations in the world and Russia, and they get together and they can they can wipe out the the third world debt. 
mm. i.e. They, they owe us millions and millions of pounds, they can't afford to pay it back. So he's gonna say let's, let's wipe the slate clean and pledge, I think, a lot more aid and stuff to them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So what do you think of that? But won't, won't they just do it again? <laughs> right, what's your thinking? No, I just I mean... Knew, I, I, I knew I had a little diamond in the rough here. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yeah, I, I admit, I brought this up because I really wanted to know what, what Carl thought of it. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I had ulterior motives. It wasn't just for awareness for, for, the, for the very worthy cause. It was because I know... Look at him looking at me. Look at him, he looks at me like a cat. Honestly, it's like there's nothing behind those eyes. Right, what do you mean? They're, just, they gonna, they're just gonna run up the debt again, you think? Well, what I mean is, right, when I was a kid, right, and I wanted to go to the arcade, I'd borrow a quid off me mum, right, and she'd say, don't come back asking for more and what have you. But I'd, I'd have a go on a pinball machine or whatever, <clears throat> game on a fruity, and then go back, and she'd go, uh, go can I have some more money? And she goes, have you ever your quid before? And I go, I know, but I'm on holiday, and she goes, there you go then. And then I'd go off and do the same thing. I didn't go, no, I wasted the last one, I'm gonna pop this in the bank. Right. right. So, so you think that's what's gonna happen with That's, with, a, that's with a nice, nice metaphor. So what do you think happening there, that the Africans are, uh, are nice blowing it down the arcade? <laughs> Instead of putting it towards a fishing rod, they're blowing it down the arcade! They're trying to, they are trying, I'm trying to win a watch. <laughs> Look, I've got a hundred goals, I think this thing is dodgy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to win a fluffy toy. As you said, Bob said, yeah, Bob said, you're never gonna get the Snoopy. You're never gonna it's, get the it's Snoopy. He's always gonna fall out of the little claw it's before rigged. he gets to the, the top. The claw is not strong <laughs> enough. Yeah. Do not waste the no, oh, no, Midge. <laughs> Midge, Midge. Have to write a song. Write another song, mate. They've blown it down the arcade. <laughs> Brilliant. So no, that's your genuine logic, is it? Well, I just don't know. Uh, I d if, if they put me in charge of it, I don't know what I'd do. I, I just think it's a. It's a Could I just say that will never happen? No. Could I just say to London? Yeah. And anyone listening Sleep on Saturday? Yeah, don't worry. Carl is not going to be put in charge of G8. It's not going to be him, Blair, <laughs> Chirac. <laughs> that would be Brilliant. a joy if it were. That would be amazing. But anyway, so let's assume for what in one some alternate universe you are in charge. What would you do? Monkeys, obviously. It's like Planet of the Apes. <laughs> What's uh, what? What are you? What are you going to do? You're you're the only you know, only person with opposable thumbs. <laughs> What's your solution? Uh, we've done a lot of it, and we've sent. Yeah. You know, money out there, we've sent them clothes and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have you? It's gone. You say we, have you sent- I've done, I've done loads of charity. Go on. No, loads, I've done, done loads of stuff. Go on. Have what? Oh, I give stuff to Oxfam. Yeah? Uh, what well, stuff you don't want anymore? Yeah, junk, you mean? Well, yeah, but it's, it'll be alright for them. I mean, I said to you the other day, like, when they collect clothes for over there, I don't know, none of my stuff's gonna fit them well. But what, but, but the thing is, I do loads of charities, I do loads of things like, uh... Go on. I pay, I pay for tools, you know, I do that thing, a monthly payment of a fiver. Paying right. for, uh, you know, a toolbox and that for someone out there. I help uh, old people, which I'm gonna stop, to be honest. Why? Cos, um, do you know this, do you know this thing I do, Steve, right? No. This is, this is a fiver a month as well, right? <laughs> got, got, I got stopped in Leicester Square one day. He said, uh, oh, there's a little old woman somewhere. She's cold, are you gonna help her out? So I was like, oh, why me, right? <laughs> so anyway, so they said it's easier if people look after one old woman, right? So Why me? I've signed up to look after this old woman called, I don't know, call her name June or whatever, it doesn't matter. So... <laughs> it does to her, but go on. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so I'm paying this fiver a month, and the, and the first fiver, you know, uh, first time I paid it, I got this thing in the post, right? Mm. And it had, uh, you know, thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, you're looking after June. Here she is, you know, here's a little uh, picture of her, and she's sat there, what have you, with a cardigan on and stuff like that. Every five pound you pay, you know, it'll be cheering her up, and, you know, look after her, pay for her food and what have you. So, for a bit, you feel good, don't you, and you think, well, I've done my bit for the world. Hmm. Anyway, two months later, get another package, right? Picture of June in there again. She's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> So he's saying, he's saying you're paying to keep her warm. <laughs> no, they meant a week in Mallorca or whatever. <laughs> and this is, this is what I mean, people turn, if they can get away with it. <sighs> that I don't know where to start! That isn't having a go though. Oh, what do you think, so what do you think, you think they're going, don't, don't bother, don't bother, um, getting a job or anything, get off of me, isn't it? Get off of me, it's June, oh, I don't isn't know, it? I don't know, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. So oh. you think Sir Bob should just wash his hands of the whole affair? You think it's a complete waste of time, is that what you're saying? That oh. you should just leave them to it. Just leave them to it. 
let them sink ever more into debt, ever more into hunger. You just think that should just, carry, just think, carry on? Do you know what it? I think he's saying? I was thinking, I think, I think, now I'm not going to words in your mouth, are you saying they blew the last lot we gave them, they've got to learn a lesson? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Is that what you're thinking? No. What are you thinking? I'm not thinking anything like that. All, all I was thinking is about this gig, it might have been better to do it, like, rather than, I don't know, ruining a grass field in Edinburgh and that. Do it out in Africa, right? Get people out there, get the tourists up. Do you know what I mean? Get a load of people out there. Mm. They've got loads of- I don't of reckon he's gonna get people to walk to Edinburgh. I very much doubt no, no, people are gonna fly to Addis Ababa to see Coldplay. Cheap flights and what have you. Right. Hot dog stands and that, locals will love that, right? <laughs> Job done. Brilliant. Let's put him in charge. Yeah, just for one day. Let's put him in charge of live. If Bob Galdoff is listening, I know, I know, uh, you respect him because he used to work on XFM. No, but if Bob, Bob, if well. you're listening, please, I would love, oh my god, a conversation, Bob Galdoff talking to, forget Kate Bush, forget that would be amazing. Can Bob please call in and speak to Carl? No one call except Bob, so we know it's Bob calling. Right, get on the phone. What's it's the phone number? What's the phone number? Can't we talk to him next week? He might be busy next week. No, He's he got won't. stuff to organise. He won't. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You can talk to us next week. All right. I'm not gonna go- I'll go through the phones. It's mental. Play <laughs> right. record. All right. What we're we having? Bit of, uh, bit of killers? Yeah. For killers, somebody told me on XFM 104.9. Tell you what, talking of, um, starving, I went to what is meant to be the best restaurant in the world on, uh... Oh, yeah. Uh, Wednesday, yeah. Sure. Um... You must be famished. Uh, well, Jonathan, uh, Ross, uh, booked a table there. It came out, I think he's been trying to get there for a while, and, uh, um, I think it's a waiting list and everything, right? And, uh... Well, it's like be, you're walking straight in. He can he's walk straight in with that, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, me and Jay went along with him and Jane to the Fat Duck in Bray. Uh, so it was voted the best restaurant in the world, okay? Right. And, um... It was incredible. I mean, it's across between a restaurant and sort of Barnum. They, yeah. you know, just incredible food. But all the way there, I'm thinking, well, I, I, I can't eat stuff in normal restaurants. Hmm. I can't eat, I don't eat red meat. I'm squeamish about things like seafood, uh, anything, anything that's a little, got too many legs or was, or was a crustacean once or uh, feeds on worms. I, I, it was, I knew that one of their, um, signature dishes was snail porridge. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to be able to eat anything here. So I'm thinking, uh, I had something to eat before I went. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking, they better not have mucked around the bread, right? Got there, beautiful. Um, and, uh, it was, it was, it was really quite fantastic, and and I let them know straight away um, that I was a philistine, and they really accommodated me. You know, uh, 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 I didn't have the snail porridge. I, they they put um, mushrooms in my snail porridge, which is more of a risotto, and there's tasting menus and that, and it was it was um, uh, really fantastic. But Jonathan, halfway through, on the way there, I don't like to travel well. On the way there, he actually phoned me and said, "Why?" Are we taking you to this restaurant? Good point. Very good point. Uh, uh, they know, even if I go around there, they cook me sausage and mash. Yeah. Or, do you know what I mean? Well, you are, you have the palate of one of those kids from the Jamie Oliver school dinners <laughs> program. <laughs> who's, he's got the lovely Jamie Oliver cooked, you know, kind of, uh, yeah. ratatouille. Yeah. But they're going for the sort of chicken twizzlers. Well, there's no chicken. I love chicken. I yeah. Like, I like, I, the chicken I can eat. I'm screaming about red meat. There's nothing I've, re you know, it's a mixture of, it's not, uh, it's not morals. There's only one thing I don't eat morally, uh, that's veal. But the other thing else is just like, if it's got eyes and legs and things sticking out of it, or there's But it hasn't pink. got eyes and legs things sticking I out of it. What are you talking about? Yeah. I, I mean, it just infuriates me. I actually got to a point now where I, ca I refuse to eat out with Ricky. Because I can't, it just sucks the life out of me. It actually makes me depressed. I can't enjoy the experience. If you go to an awards do, they bring out lovely, gr uh, lovely food, you know, three courses, always and lamb. you're whinging. You're it's always salmon, whinging. Which is hardly cooked, followed by lamb. Lo lovely bit of lamb. Who doesn't think lamb is the best of all the meats? Oh. And you no. just, you whinge, you complain, you look at Jane like a little boy who's like, oh no, why have you brought me here? <laughs> you are just, it was, oh. And I tell you, and I put it, the, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, badmouth people, but I suspect it's your family. I suspect it was your upbringing. I imagine, you know, I imagine that if I came to your house, you know, 
late sixties, early seventies, <laughs> came round to your place in Reading, it would have just been the smell of chip fat. All just on. everywhere. Chip fat fat just on. one of those chip fat fires that's just, yeah, like you say, constantly, twenty four hours but a day. I used to eat things. I away. used to eat beef and pork and that. And then I, it, it, I used to have to, eventually, when I was getting sort of squeamish and getting older, I'd make a burn it so much that it was just like chewing on a piece of leather <laughs> anyway. Where I couldn't, I couldn't stand the, the sight of blood or something. A salad so, in your house would have been I'll a, tell you what a, a salad onion and a packet of crisps. No, a salad in my house, right, was when it was summer, we were out in the garden, lovely salad, grated cheese, grated egg, two bits of beetroot with your leaves, um, <laughs> uh, a pickled onion and a packet of crisps. <laughs> Uh, and that was that was uh, that was a salad. But yeah. now, is, uh, that, is that do you agree that that is probably the reason why you've got this 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 palate? And I don't even it's no, not even I've a palate. Got, that's I've, too I've, nice I've, I've got more it. squeamish as I've got older. Because I say I, I used to I used to eat beef but and what pork. What do you and mean squeamish? I don't understand what you mean squeamish. I, I suddenly fish, think about cooked. it. I can eat I, I can eat like you know like it has to be blasted. It has to be unrecognised to be an animal. You know what I mean? I, I mustn't see a bit of pink or a bit of fat. So if we if we were in biblical times, yeah. and you're there, <laughs> and Jesus Christ has just fed forty thousand with some fishes and some loaves, you'd be going, I'm not into the fish, JC. I say you take and the head off, cook, cook, really cook, take the skin off. I, there's, I can see a bit of spine. And unless, that, unless that bread is mighty white, I'm not interested. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from of that, because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, he'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But mm. lunchtime, Would why you? would I spend- you'd be happy to spend twenty quid on lunch. Imagine that every single day. There's no one out there who's eating lunch, twenty quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime, because we've- I don't know what happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger green curry for lunch, you're asleep by one thirty. we're trying to work, we're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just <laughs> eating a sheep, and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't eat- Carl, he does not like the spare- he, he- he'll go- he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich for- Having an argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> I don't want to bring no, back up again, here's but... the situation, Carl. Yeah. I lent you 50p, and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, "Don't worry about it, Carl." You should offer me the 50p. Go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go. Don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. No, it's the way that you were like. I said, "Where's my 50p?" You went, "Oh, you don't need that." That's not your decision. I, I, didn't, I didn't say that. I said, I, I, "I don't think I've got it at the moment, or whatever." Rubbish. And you're going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's, let's not go over it again. I, mean. I just I just think that value for money is important. Like, now, okay, so for instance, in the morning, I have to get the tube, but you can get a, a, a travel card, zones one and two, right? It's about £4.70, I think. But before 9.30, it's about £6.50. All right, and then at 9.30, when the clock, literally on the clock ticks over to 9.30, it's £4.70, right? Now, sometimes I'll get there, it'll be about 20 past nine. Now you'd be saying to me, oh, I just spend it, just spend it, and I'm thinking I've got ten minutes, I'll perhaps read the paper, wait for it to click over to 9.30, and then I can get a cheaper ticket. Now surely that makes sense. Surely that's logic. Mm. Don't, I mean, if you were in that situation, Rick, if you were there, right, and you had, let's say you had three minutes to wait mm. before 9.30, what would you do? Would you stand there and wait? No, because waiting to me is worse than uh, anything. It's madness. It's madness. I can't stand queuing, I can't stand, no, I'd, I'd, I'd pay, yeah. How long would it have to be before you'd wait? I, I, I if mean, there was like a minute on the clock to go, would you wait? Uh. If they literally said, if you wait 30 seconds, it's th I, I go, um, all right. Well, that is the case. That literally yeah. is the case. okay. But not 10 minutes, no. What not about you, Carl? Uh, I'd feel fl if it was 30 seconds, I'd feel flash going, I'd spend three pounds. But if it was like a couple of minutes, I'd go, oh, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I, I just, I just wouldn't. Madness. Yeah. Think about how that tots up over the years. Amazing. Carl, what about you, Carl? Would you do it? It, it depends, doesn't it, what your job is and that. If you're a doctor, you've got to get to, you know, go and save someone or whatever. You can't say, oh, just... Ten minutes. Depends. Depends on the situation. Depends. Most of the time, I've got to get in work early. I can't be hanging around to last night. But you night. don't, though, do you? I've, so, I've, you know, I've, I've called him long as a film. He was out. He, uh, I've seen him do one day, yeah. right? I've seen him for one whole day. He went away. He fell asleep at um, quarter to eight in the bath because he was knackered. So yeah. you know, he has five weeks out of the year. Oh, He's taking the piss. <laughs> Feeder, pushing the senses. Quite a food related sort of uh, show. Isn't it, it is. Feeding. Thinking of gluttony, did you Just see in, uh, <laughs> I think it was Heat magazine, huh? um, it was former pop idol winner Michelle McManus. Oh, yeah. She's lost considerable, she's lost a lot of weight. Oh, yeah. And, she's lost um, five stone, hasn't she? Please see that the headline was um, I used to eat uh, 12 packets of Doritos a night. At she's night. 12 packets of Doritos. I just like the idea that you've got to 11 packets and you're thinking, 
One more do. It's a bit peckish. One more do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so unbelievable. Yeah. But someone sent in a couple of uh, odds and ends news stories. You know, they've gleaned off the web. And apparently, uh, Britain's fattest family have shared twenty-three stone. Um, they, what, uh, none of them died. Between the five of them, oh come on, between the five of them, the Phillips family from Worcester weighed more than a hundred stone. Jesus. Well, how many are there though? They spent five of them, and they spent three hundred pounds a week on food. Um, a, an evening meal consisted of an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet and another ice cream stop at McDonald's. Um, the mum, she was generally happy, like Carl is, but she said she used to get upset when she couldn't um, buy clothes for her kids because the shops didn't stock anything above XXXXXL. Um, but uh, <laughs> it says here, <laughs> it says Mitchell, 13, was the heaviest of the three, weighing 27 stone. By the age of four, he was Britain's fattest toddler, weighing 10 stone. Is that competition <laughs> still going? He, bro <laughs> he broke <sighs> five bikes. He broke five bikes by uh, buckling the wheels. Oh, that's I know you're always kind of fat kids, Carl. Chasing an ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> the bike just fell apart. Yeah. Wow. Who knows? Maybe now he's on that new uh, bike ride, you know, because he's lost some weight. Oh, that would be painful, that, wouldn't that it? Would if one of them buckles. Yeah. Well, I've got uh, another food related uh, item here. Now, Carl, I got a little email via um, my agent sent from someone here, okay, S sent from someone at. Um, XFM, okay, and uh, I won't say it was, she just said, uh, I thought um, this might be uh, good for Ricky to use on Saturday, and obviously what happened is, Suzanne has sent you an email in the week, it was Wednesday, and you've returned it, but I think you've returned it to the wrong email address, you returned it to someone here, who of course immediately forwarded it to my agent for ridicule on the show, don't panic, it's nothing that bad, okay. It's uh, an email from Suzanne talking about your tea that night. Was Suzanne out on Wednesday night? Was the uh, an England game, something? Yeah. So you you were alone. You were home alone, were you Wednesday night? Yeah. Did you enjoy your meal? Was it was it a quiche? Go on. Right. From Suzanne to Carl. Take the quiche and put it on the baking tray. Cook for 30 minutes on 190. Take lettuce and put on plate. Take three tomatoes, wash and chop into quarters. Place on lettuce. Take an avocado, chop in half, remove the stone, <laughs> peel skin and slice. Place on salad. Put salt and pepper on and a dribble of olive and balsamic vinegar dressing. Right? In brackets, small bottle behind the cafetiere. <laughs> Right, in case he's reaching for bleach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he's to put everything out of the way. Right? Then sprinkle a smidge of parmesan on top. Remove quiche from oven, cut into quarters, and put on plate. Eat. Oh, wow. <laughs> Does she have to do that every <laughs> single time? She's like... No, it's just that she, I'm not that good at cooking, right? Um, and to be honest, that, that was a lot of hard work. I didn't bother warming it up. <laughs> And I did without the avocado. <laughs> Why? Why? Too much messing about. <laughs> he didn't even do that with instructions. It was too much. But, oh. um, yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that good at cooking. And did that, you genuinely? Um, that's not cooking, though, is it, Carl? That's, that's, that's heating up a quiche. That's co cooking it is making the quiche. Yeah, but I'm. I'm just. Kind so of do you? Like... Could you have figured that? out? <sighs> she left that note for you. Why did she have to tell you what the olive oil and um, balsamic vinegar was? Because I've, I've, I've put sort of cooking oil on my food once and I said, oh, it's a bit... <laughs> it's ever since, I'm right, gonna year, die. years ago... I'm gonna die! Years ago... Oh, God, it, like leaving Mr. Magoo at home! It, it, was, just... it was ever since I put sausages in the toaster. That, uh, <laughs> oh, God, what I do you this, mean? I nearly set the flat on fire. What do you mean? Because, do you know, like, when you're grilling food in a pan and all that? Yeah. Sort of sausages spit and it goes everywhere, doesn't it? And it makes everywhere <laughs> greasy. <laughs> So I thought, well, <laughs> just want to warm them up. Yeah. Put them in the toaster. Yeah. What happened? And she sort of caught- well, They got she, stuck and they sort of caught on fire, I she, imagine. She, well, she came in just as I was sort of plunging it and might have came in from work. She said, what are you doing? What are you- I said, no, I'm in sausages. <laughs> well, the oven isn't on. I know, they're in here. <laughs> what, you turn it off? They're panicking and that. But, 
<laughs> I've, I've never been into it. I've never been into cooking and art school and oh stuff. I didn't bother doing it. Oh, every time Suzanne comes home, she must think, please be the house still there. Yeah. Please, uh, please not let me hear a fire engine as I come round this corner. Oh, God. She comes and goes, oh, God, thank God. I bet she's always happy to see you when she gets home and you haven't burned the place down or introduced some howler monkeys or something. But Unbelievable. I, what I find extraordinary is there are people who are in sort of care in the community who don't need instructions no. on how to prepare for them. Oh, they, they, they can do it, yeah, you show them once. Yeah, no, they, 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 Whatever you do, don't put sausages in the toaster, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they, and they, they don't, it. They don't put sausages in the toaster. Yeah. What what they, they put their fingers in. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, are we doing, uh, Rockbusters on Sunday? Oh, yeah, let's play a song. The, it's we'll what play, London's we'll, waiting for. I'll tell for. you what, we'll play a song and do, do Why not? Yeah. It's worth waiting Plus, for. Have we still got monkey news to come? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Roxy Music with the, uh, the old Dylan classic Hard Rains on XFM 104.9. Mixing it up, just mixing it up, oh, mixing yeah, and matching. We've got a new young, we've got a bit of uh, Roxy Music, we don't care, do we? But they were right up, bang up today with some of the latest tracks from Feeder and the like, so. Yeah, 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 yeah big time. <laughs> but, uh, it's what they're waiting for, it's the Rockbuster dancers. That's right. Uh, Alright. Okay, give us the clue, give us the answer. Right then, uh, first one. Oh, yeah, because we haven't got long for monkey news. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. First one. <laughs> There's a, there's a vehicle over there that's, uh, it's changed. selling kebabs. Oh, it's changed. Go on. <clears throat> Initial D. Yeah, where is it? That was Donovan. Donovan. Okay. All right, yeah, okay. Yeah. That Good. Works. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah. Second that's one. a real clue. Mm. Well, they got it, like they always do, so they're yeah. always real clues. Mm. Uh, second one. You're asked if you want that bit of the egg, right? You think about it, then you decide against it. I think I know this one. What was the initial again? Y O. Um, is this um, uh, uh, John Lennon's um, wife, Yoke Ono? Yeah, that's right. I think that was her name, Yoke Ono, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's Yoke Ono. That, that was, was Yoke Ono. No, no, no. no. You've got oh, it no. wrong. You're thinking about it. You ask if you want a bit of the egg. Yeah. You go, Yoke. You think about it. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, so you say it twice, you stutter. So no, it's no, Yoke. No, no, no. Yoke O oh, Ono. Oh, no, no, no her name's Yoke O oh, Ono, though. Yeah, yo, yeah. Oh, no, listen to the clue again. Okay, no, 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 So what you say is, do you, do you want this bit of the egg? You look, oh, look, the egg of it now. Yolk, oh, oh, no. Yolk, oh, oh, no. Yolk, oh, oh, no. Yolk, oh, oh, no. Yolk, oh, no, no. Oh, yolk. Yeah, go on, brilliant. Yeah, okay, yeah, yolk, oh, no, yeah, go on, yeah. Next, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last one was, uh, I don't think this burger will catch on. That was, uh, initial M. Yeah. McFly. Right? So, there's your three clues. Which, which one it? it won't catch on. Well, who'd want to eat that? You know what I mean? It's like a, a Mac burger or whatever, Mac, Mac chicken, Mac fly. <laughs> Don't want one. Put it back. I'll have a chicken. <laughs> right? So, who's, who's, got the, oh. who's got the three then? Well, well done to uh, Ian Shillam. <laughs> The man's got his, uh, got all his answers right amazingly. Uh, he go, he wins all those great prizes, including, uh, Ladder 49, starring Joaquin Phoenix and John Travolta, which I don't think anyone's ever seen. Yeah, there's 49 of them. <laughs> and, so. um, and he wins that, but he also goes forward, as you say, to the big draw, which will come up at the uh, end of the uh, It's uh, to run. win the signed, uh, Homer saying, I like Carl because he's stupid like me. And you can see Matt Groening drawing that to know it's real on, uh, com, and you can win that, and a signed Nigel Tufnell poster. Brilliant. <laughs> It's a Ricky and Steve classic on XFM Sugar, if I can't change your mind. Brilliant. Uh, so listen, it's time, isn't it? We've only got a few minutes left, so you better play the jingle. Oh, oh chimpanzee that! Monkey news. <laughs> so monkey news, if you've uh, only just started listening to the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you poor fool. Um, monkey News is where Carl, um, reports for us all the latest monkey activity. A headline or a word or someone, someone, someone that he overheard in a pub and then totally embellishes it and makes it ridiculous and impossible. He <laughs> believes it though. He believes every word he's saying. Let me say that before you hear, when you hear this, whatever it is, I haven't heard it, twaddle, um, remember, Carl totally believes it. Go on. Right, so anyway, right, I think it's in, uh, in LA, this happened. Right. I think. Why, why does he think? Uh, so these people are in a, in a restaurant having a lovely meal. 
He's one of them short and hairy, but it goes, <laughs> totally covers from top to bottom in a space suit so he didn't know it was a monkey. It's so, not one of the customers, one of the waiters? So, th so they're having a, having a lovely dinner, probably one of the best sort of dinners they've, they've had, right? Yeah. Mm. So the waiter comes over and it's like, you know, can we just say that I had a lovely meal and that? Right, it's the chef. <laughs> it was his. So, can we see uh, the chef? Yeah. So, so it's kind of, can we just, you know, see, see the guy who cooked it? Of course. Yeah. 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 Short feather, hairy. So the waiter, said, to be honest, the, waiter, much. the waiter said, look, he's busy, you know, he's got meals to cook and what have you. He hadn't really got time. He said, it only take a minute. He said, no, I prefer, you know. So this is I'll, a restaurant in LA that I'll, serves brilliant food. I'll pass, I'll pass your message on and what have you, right? So, um. So he sends for so, uh, monkey P.O.Y. So it's a bit odd, anyway. <laughs> So, so they go, so they go out, right? They go, uh, they go out to the car and they notice the, uh, the kitchen door's open. Yeah. Right? Yeah, of course they do, because they're, they're gonna discover something that I don't know. So they they're just... Gonna hold on, this, um, just, just out of interest, this, uh, the, where did this, um, chef train before, before we see him or reveal, you know, what he might look like or mm -hmm. like to eat, yeah, um, uh, um... So well, anyway, so uh, so they pop their head in and think we'll just we'll just nip in and go yeah, and, you know, know. love 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 fruit salad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they stick their see head the head head. We better see the human chef. <laughs> you never guess what? Go on. Monkey stood on a chair, right, cooking veg. <laughs> <laughs> right. So anyway, so they're like, what's going on here? <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean he's cooking veg? What is he doing with it? Well, he's, he's stood on a chair by the by the cooker and he's yeah. uh, chopping. Chopping stuff oh, he's, he's chopping as well, nice. No, like it? yeah. It's got a little, uh, you know, he's it, it, got the, the bosses in there. They're they're like a bit shocked, so he's a bit panicking because he's got this monkey working for him. So they say to him, "What's going on? Eh? We didn't know this. This is what's going on. You know, you, why have you got a monkey cooking stuff?" So he said, "Well, it's only a monkey. I should point out, who probably doesn't need instructions from its girlfriend." <laughs> uh, forget it.